This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to the Lord's house. May our God bless us richly as we worship him together, as we hear his word, that we might be encouraged as he has grace and mercy for each and every one of us. A reminder for, for you to uh, fill out the uh, co- uh, connections card and put that in the basket as you go uh, today or uh, hand it to an usher later on. Uh, thank you for doing that so we can uh, continue to care for our members and reach out to people and also know who's coming to visit us so that we can reach out to them. We turn to our opening hymn, The Advent of Our King. We stand as we sing the last verse of the hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We take a moment for silent reflection on God's word and for self-examination. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, 
seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Earth open that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this, the fourth Sunday in uh, Advent, is from 2 Samuel chapter 7. Now when the king lived in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling." In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel." And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today is from Romans chapter 16. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In honor of Jesus, please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there, shall, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, 
the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. We join together in confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We now have the children's message. Good morning, everybody. As we begin, kids, wherever you are, will you please pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, please be with us as we learn about you. Amen. Do you know... I just dropped my notes. Do you know where your name came from? Any of the kids out there, do you know where your name came from? Abby? Do you know why your parents picked your name? Your dad liked that it meant joy. Kaylin, were you going to say something? Ooh, because it's Irish. Okay. Does anybody else know? You know, when parents are picking names, it's a tough job. Because guess what? It's going to be your name your whole life. People are going to call you that name for the rest of your life, and it is a tough job. So as you guys were coming in, I was thinking about names. And there are a lot of reasons that parents pick names. Names. Sometimes parents pick names just because they like the sound of them. They think it's a nice sounding name, which is where my name came from. My parents named me Cameron because they thought it was a nice sounding name. But the meaning of the name doesn't have very much significance because the name Cameron means long nose. Nope, not long, crooked (laughs) nose. The name Cameron means crooked nose. It's actually a last name of a Scottish uh, family, and I guess they must have had crooked noses at some point because that's how their clan got their name. But my parents liked the sound of the name, so we kind of kept that tradition going with our son Landon. We liked the sound of the name, but Landon is an English clan name that means Long Hill doesn't really have any significance as far as the meaning of the name, but we thought it sounded nice. Sometimes parents pick names because the meanings have important reminders, like Abby's name and Hannah's name. Abigail means joy, and Abby's middle name is joy. And Hannah means grace, and Hannah's middle name is grace. Their parents pick those names because they have such significance to them as a family. Sometimes names have meanings that are 
biblical or remind us of God, like Michael is a name that means like God, or David means beloved, or Elizabeth, which is my mom's name, means God's promise. Sometimes our names have significance for us. Sometimes our names are connected to our families. My middle name is Edward. And Edward is my dad's name. And Edward was my grandpa's middle name. And Edward was my great grandpa's middle name. And Edward is Landon's middle name. And Leo, our youngest, is named after my great great grandpa and his grandpa, David, Leo David. And Evelyn is named after two of her grandmas, my grandma, Ruth Evelyn, and my wife's grandma, Jean, Evelyn Jean. There's lots of significance when we are choosing names, and it's a hard job for parents to think about sometimes. We see in our gospel reading, though, that God took that difficult job out of Mary and Joseph's hands. Mary and Joseph didn't have to struggle with what they were going to name their baby because, as the angel told Mary, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. God took the job of picking Jesus' name out of Mary's hands because he knew that Jesus needed a name that was significant, that had meaning, and had power. And we know that Jesus' name means God saves, Savior. Jesus was sent as a baby to be our Savior so that one day he could die on a cross and rise again so that we can have forgiveness and be saved by God so that we can spend eternity with him in heaven. As you leave today, I want you to think about your name. And if you don't know exactly where your parents came up with your name, maybe you could ask them, where did my name come from? What does it mean to you? Did you pick it because it just sounds nice? Or is it a family name? Or does it have special meaning to our family? Let's pray about the good news of Jesus and his name that gives us life and saves. Heavenly Father, thank you for the reminder through your word today that you sent Jesus to be our Savior, that his name has power to save us, to give us eternal life with you in heaven. Help us to remember that this Christmas season and help us to share that with everyone around you, around us. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing our next hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text for this morning's meditation, the Gospel reading from Luke chapter 1. And our brothers and sisters in Christ, our lives are filled with conversations. Do you remember the last conversation you had? Maybe it was walking into church this morning. Maybe it was on the drive in today. Do you remember what you talked about? <laughs> Sometimes, oftentimes, our conversations are forgettable, aren't they? We may talk about the weather, we may talk about work or school or the children or the grandchildren, and we walk away from that conversation and we don't remember that conversation. They're usually easily forgettable, not that significant. And yet the, our lives are filled with conversations, and, and those conversations aren't always forgettable. There are times in our lives where we have conversations that are memorable, unforgettable. You know those conversations. That last conversation you had with a family member before death came unforgettable. That conversation that you're in the middle of that you realize this is the person you want to marry. The conversation with her father <laughs> or the future son-in-law. The conversation you had that directed you to choose school or a career path or change jobs. Those conversations with those individuals are memorable, unforgettable. No matter how hard we would try, we would never forget those life-changing conversations. In Luke 1, we get to overhear a conversation. God invites us to eavesdrop on a conversation, a memorable conversation. We know the participants. There's Mary. We don't know much about Mary. In fact, outside of Luke 1, we don't know much about her previous life, but she was from Nazareth, a really small town out in far away Galilee. There was nothing significant about Nazareth. In fact, Nathaniel says in John, can anything good come from Nazareth? Luke tells us that she was an Israelite from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but the power of the Israelites at that time well, the influence of King David and the wisdom of Solomon, they have been long forgotten, and Israel doesn't seem like a very significant people during Mary's day. She was young, a teenager, maybe 13, 14, possibly 15 years old. And who's speaking to her? An angel. Gabriel. We don't know much about the angel either. In fact, Gabriel is only two of the angels that are named in Scripture. The other one is Michael, who's named in Jude and Revelation. Gabriel, he's spoken of here in Luke chapter 1 and in Daniel chapters 8 and 9. And Gabriel means a man or mighty one of God. Gabriel is the one who stood in the presence of God to deliver his word. And in Daniel chapter 8, his presence invoked fear in the lives of people. And Gabriel, he begins the conversation. A conversation that we get to eavesdrop in on and, and listen to his words. And, and he begins in our text in verse 28, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Luke tells us that Mary doesn't know what this kind of greeting is like and what's it mean. And she's, you can hear some anxiousness or see some anxiousness or see some worry or, or even fear to say, what kind of greeting is that? 
Gabriel continues the conversation. He says, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Can you hear the excitement? Gabriel, this mighty messenger from God, is sharing with Mary that she is going to give birth to the Savior, a Savior that has been promised from the beginning. And you hear the excitement. You can hear the joy. In fact, the angels in heaven, they were only, they were only hoping to, to long to look into these sort of matters. First Peter chapter 1, verse 12 tells us that, that the angels knew a Savior was coming and And they knew it was going to happen, but God hadn't revealed it to them. Can you imagine these messengers of God anxiously looking how God is going to work in the lives of his people? And here Gabriel gets to share the message with Mary. And Mary, in this conversation, she responds with an honest question. It's not like the question of Zechariah that says, this can't happen because I'm too old. Mary Mary hears these words, and her question is, how will this be since I am a virgin? The angel answers, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy the Son of God. Mary, she responds with words of faith. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. (laughs) We get to listen in on this conversation. Are you not surprised? Are you not floored by Mary's response? There are no questions about her fiancé. And there's no questions about what does this mean for the wedding that they're planning and the banquet and the ceremony. There are no questions from Mary about her reputation and how people are going to see her or view her or what they're going to think about her. No, Mary responds, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. What words of faith? Trust. In the midst of this conversation. You know, church historians have written about this account of Mary. They said that in this account, there are three miracles with Mary. The first miracle is that as a virgin, she would give birth to a baby. And the second miracle is that the baby she would give birth to is God. And the third miracle is that she believed the words of the angel. Luther Luther wrote about these three miracles of Mary and and regarding the first one that that she would be a virgin who gives birth to a baby he said he called that a quote a mere trifle it's of little importance it is not that significance his point is that our god is so great and powerful that to have a woman give birth to a baby as a virgin that is easy for God to do. <laughs> and he said regarding the second one, that the baby would be God, he goes, that's a bigger deal. But the true miracle is the third one, that Mary believed the word. She believed and trusted in the word of the angel. 
that's the most powerful miracle. And isn't that true? She trusted in a word that was given to her. And isn't that something we marvel at? Because we, we know how hard it is sometimes to trust that word of God, don't we? We know God's word. We know the promise of Scripture. We know what Jesus says in Matthew 28. Lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. But sometimes that word is hard to believe, isn't it? Especially in the midst of a pandemic. When people are isolated and separated and alone. It's sometimes hard to believe that Jesus is always with us. When the loneliness set in, sets in and the house seems so silent, it's hard to trust that word of promise. We know Jesus' words. We know what he says in John chapter 10, verse 10, that he has come to give life, that you may have it abundantly. And we know Jesus blesses with life. And yet, Lord, you know the struggles of my life and the burdens of my life and the suffering in my life, and the illnesses in my life, and the pains in my life, and you promise abundant life, and yet this life doesn't seem abundant. And it seems hard to trust and believe the promise. Uh, the promise in Scripture, that Jesus' death covers all of our sins. We hear that promise. We know that promise. But to trust that promise, to trust that promise means God has to forgive that sin. The sin that burdens you and weighs you down with guilt, that sin that you are ashamed of and you wonder if God is able to forgive you of that sin. Yes, we know God's Word. We hear God's Word. And sometimes it's a struggle to trust God's Word, to believe that Word, to have faith in that Word. And that's what makes this conversation so powerful to listen to. Mary, that young girl, hears the word of an angel and she trusts the word. She believes the promise. And how does the conversation begin? Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. I want us to think about that greeting for a moment. The text tells us in verse 29 that Mary was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. What kind of greeting is that? Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. In the original language, that word greetings literally means rejoice. Rejoice, O favored one, the Lord is with you. And that word favored one, that word favored one is used two times in Scripture. One, right here in Luke chapter 1, verse 28. It comes from the root word Greek, I know it's Greek, karato. Not very familiar, is it? <laughs> what does that mean? 
to cause to be the recipient of a benefit. It's someone who has received a blessing, a benefit from somebody else. It can be literally translated to bestow favor on, or someone who is highly favored, someone who is blessed, and that's whom the angel is speaking to. Rejoice, Mary. You are highly favored. You are blessed by God. God bestows his grace on you. And we see that here in Luke 1, verse 28. And the other passage of Scripture where that Greek word to bestow blessing upon, it's used in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. Where God uses his servant Paul to speak about you as his daughters, as his sons. And what does God call you? his favored one, the one on whom he bestows his blessing, his grace, the one on whom he finds favor. Yes, when we hear this conversation, when we hear the angel speaking to Mary here, we hear God speaking to you. Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. Rejoice, O favored one. The Lord is with you. He has showered his grace upon you. He has given you his love. He has bestowed the forgiveness of Jesus on you. By the power of his word, through the work of his son Jesus, by his death and resurrection, God has chosen you to be his favored one his blessed one, the one on whom he bestows his grace abundantly, that he may claim you as his redeemed child, that he may have conversations with you through his word. And every time we hear his word, every time we open his word in devotion. We can hear the conversation begin with the same way the conversation with Mary begins. Re greetings, O oh favored one. Even when God's word with his law shows us our sin, we can hear God's conversation with us. Re greetings, O oh favored one. What you are doing is not good for you. And the path you are going is going to cause suffering and pain. And I want you to stop from going down that path. It's a conversation that God has with us even when we are stricken with guilt and sin and shame. And he says to you, rejoice, O favored one. I forgive you by the death of my son Jesus and his victorious resurrection. Yes. God invites us into conversation with him through the power of his word. And in that conversation, he calls you his favored one, his blessed one, the one on whom he showers his grace and his love and forgiveness. And when we have that conversation, when we hear that conversation that God has with us, it's memorable, isn't it? It's not one of those conversations that we easily forget and walk away from. No, it's a life-changing conversation. A conversation that assures us that God's love for you is boundless, a love that lasts for eternity in his kingdom. It's conversation that God has with you so that you, in your conversations, can remind people of who they are and how God sees them, and how God sees you. No, you should not say, yes, Jesus loves you, but I'm his favorite. <laughs> 
that may not be understood. But you can say, yes, Jesus loves you. In fact, he calls you his favored one. So let us rejoice. Rejoice, O favored one, for the Lord is with you. And you can speak about God's presence and his love and his grace and his forgiveness in the conversations you have with people. And those conversations, those conversations are memorable as you help people see a Savior, Jesus, who finds favor in his people by his death and resurrection. May God bless you in the conversations that you have that speak of Jesus. In his name, amen. Now may the peace of Jesus, who surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds the one true faith into life everlasting. Amen. As we turn to the Lord in prayer, I'd like to highlight some individuals that we're praying for this morning. We pray for uh, uh, Lois Carlton, who fell this past week and broke her hip. Uh, she had a surgery just the other day and, and is still in the hospital. Hopefully, in about a week or so or less, that she'll be able to go to the uh, a rehab center. We pray for Steve Hildenberg, who has COVID. He was put on a ventilator yesterday, and so we pray for him, uh, along with the others, Ron and Linda Kessler, who are in Arizona, both have uh, COVID right now, and I think they're holding their own at this point, but they, they're both uh, stricken with this illness. We also include in our prayers uh, the family of Pat Cardillo. Pat is Dave Cardillo's brother uh, from Arizona. He passed away from COVID on Friday, and so we pray for uh, the family and those uh, who mourn his death. We pray for Wendy Nelson as she recovers from cancer surgery. Uh, it's, uh, the results at this point sound very favorable, that they were able to remove all the cancer, and we're thankful for that, so we include her in our prayers too. Please uh, stand for prayer. O Most High, you have favored us in the incarnation of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary. In everything, let it be to us according to your word. Give us faith to believe that nothing is impossible with you, and so to pray boldly in childlike confidence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Most High, you have revealed in Christ Jesus the mystery kept secret for long ages, now made known to all nations through the prophetic and apostolic scriptures. According to your eternal command, give us faithful preachers of your gospel and empower them to proclaim it clearly that it may be fruitful in strengthening faith and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Most High, hear our prayers on behalf of our nation, its president, all legislatures and judges, those newly elected to serve. Preserve, preserve their lives and guide their actions for the good of our people. Give peace among the nations of the earth and preserve us from pestilence and famine, war and bloodshed, corruption, rebellion, and every evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Most High, grant healing to the sick and give peace to the anxious and fearful. Especially we hold before you Sharla, Lori, J.R., Don, Katie, Adi, Rochelle, Britton, Walter and Betty, Kathleen Ford, Rhonda Gale, Madonna Hartman, Brittany Hatzel, Steve Hildenberg, Bev Hoos, Lorraine Isaacson, Peter Janik, Kariana Jenguji, Keith Johnson, Yvonne Camerzel, Ron and Linda Kessler, Ted and Irene Kinzel, Carol and Saul Kolber, Don and Joanne Kunkel, Tammy Larson, Gary Lycombe, Sue McCannell, Patty Munyon, Kinsley Murray, Wendy Nelson, Joyce, Lance Renstrom, Dick Rudio, 
Jamie Shaw, Lucille Smelzer, Kristen Walter, Sandy West, Kevin Worth, and the family and friends of Pat Cardillo. Lord, grant your healing, grant your comfort, grant your peace, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Most High, we give you thanks for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the key of David and the scepter of the house of Israel. By his death he has opened the kingdom of heaven and closed the gates of hell for all who trust in him. By his resurrection he has rescued the prisoners who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Grant that as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, may we always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in the glory at the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We now sing our sending hymn.
Please take your seats. We have a couple of announcements to make this morning before we move to uh, Bible study and uh, so in fellowship. Um, you note in the bulletin we have our schedule for this uh, Christmas season, and uh, we are still looking for some ushers that we need for the Christmas Eve services, particularly on Christmas Eve, the 2, 4, and 6 uh, time frame. So uh, please sign up. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex for that. Uh, also, when you come on Christmas Eve uh, or any time, uh, come as a family, sit as a family. You can fill a whole row up in a pew up if you're a family. And if there, anyone's willing to give a special Christmas present to people uh, who would like to be upstairs and you're willing to go downstairs to view uh, the service from the internet or the connection that we have, the setup, uh, that'd be nice. Uh, again, that's up to you. But uh, we don't know what's going to happen on Christmas Eve. We don't, we, you know, normally it's very crowded. It may still be that way, uh, although uh, with the, the, the situation right now in our society, we don't know if there'll be a lot of people who'll stay home. We're going to be live streaming the, the uh, as you've heard before, it's in here too, about the um, uh, Christmas Eve Eve on the 23rd. That'll be live streamed. That'll be led by our worship team or a combination of worship teams. And then we're live streaming the 2 o'clock service on Christmas Eve. Uh, so that uh, that can happen. Uh, also, I guess Christmas Day is live streamed and also the Sunday is live streamed on the 27th. Now note, we're having just the one service on Sunday, the 27th. There's no Saturday service and only one service on Sunday, no Bible study. But that time is at 10 o'clock, not 10.30. So keep that in mind. Uh, the service is one at 10 o'clock. Trying to kind of split the difference, knowing that that might mess people up uh, who come at the 10.30 time. So pass that word out and let people know about that. Also, the uh, envelopes uh, for next year are in the classroom on the north side there, so uh, check that out if you haven't already picked up your envelopes for this next year. And are there any other announcements that we need to share?